Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Henrik Palmgren, and this is Red Eyes Radio. We are coming to you from Gothenburg, Sweden, and you can find us online at redeyescreations.com. News updated daily, radio programs, webcast, video interviews, and film. And uh, don't forget to check out our members area where we just added our film, Architects of Control, by the way. And you can view it right there on the website in high resolution flash or download the file to your computer. Uh, all information about this is available on our website. And uh, today we have a very, very special program for you. We are going to talk about a very, very important topic with our guest David Icke. Uh, we are going to discuss the Lisbon Treaty. And this has consequences for everyone, pretty much, uh, people outside the EU as well, um, as the European Union is attempting to grab more power from the nations of Europe, uh, who has been, I guess, stupid enough to join the EU, in order to grow into another kind of super state uh, to balance the power on the world scene, to create a non-empirical empire, as Barroso called it, however that will work. Uh, but this might actually happen as soon as this October, uh, when Ireland is expected to have another referendum. Uh, Ireland, of course, voted no in June uh, this year. Hooray for the Irish. And that's kind of uh, thwarted uh, the attempts to bring in this European constitution. Uh, Sweden ratified the treaty in a jiffy. So did the UK. Uh, the Queen, of course, gave her royal assent, signed the goatskin. Uh, they call it the instruments of ratification. They tie them in blue leather and ribbons. And the documents are now lodged in Rome. I'm not kidding you on this one. Uh, Germany, Czech Republic and Poland, I think, uh, haven't signed the treaty yet, but are expected to do so soon. And uh, so these are the, this is the issue that we'll talk about here today. But before we, we bring on our guest, uh, David, I just want to mention as well that uh, David has been going around the world this year doing talks, working harder than ever before to spread the word uh, and highlight the important information. And he's coming to Gothenburg as well in Sweden later this year in October, I think it is. And uh, you can, of course, find more uh, information about this, uh, his books, his DVDs, and, and the talks he's doing at his website, davidike.com. So head over there and check it out. Uh, very good to have you back on the program again, uh, David. How are you? I'm good, Henrik. Yeah, it's, um, it's a challenge to keep uh, dealing with all the things that um, I'm being asked to do at the moment, but it's a nice challenge because it shows that uh, compared with uh, 20 years ago, even, even, even five years ago, really, that uh, minds are opening and I think we've reached the point very clearly where the tyranny that has been working under the surface uh, subliminally to most people uh, all these decades and beyond has now broken the surface where um, people can see it and this is also concentrating people's minds on uh, looking at it rather than being in denial of it so uh, it's, uh, it's a challenge to meet all the demands but it's a nice one because uh, it means that things are changing do you feel it's, and they need it's to progressing? and they need to oh yeah so bad they need to change so bad do you, do you feel that it's it's progress then in other words you're positive on, on the outlook here well I, i'm moving along a, a journey that started for me consciously 20 years ago it started for me 57 years ago when i look back um and it's taken me through many different levels of this. There's been a, a guiding force that I became aware of in uh, 1990 and now is extremely tangible and becoming more tangible by the hour uh, in my life. And it first of all started handing me pieces purely by the synchronicity of my life, you know, bumping into people, documents, books, uh, experiences that were showing me things. And it started off um, with what I call the five sense level of this. This was uh, interbreeding families that control the banking system and uh, orchestrating centralization of power like the European Union that you've mentioned um, that are looking for a world government, a world central bank, a world army, a world currency, a microchip population. Uh, and then I, it, it took me into uh, deeper levels like the interdimensional connection to this, that these families are actually connected to non-human uh, entities and it carried on taking me into the areas of the illusory nature of what we call physical reality. And this has now continued and I'm now going into areas. So I'm not going to talk about it yet because I want to put all the pieces together and present it as one unit. But it's taken me into areas now that um, is making it uh, very plain to me that there is a way out of this. Right. Um, but it's not, it's not a way that um, people might uh, think of. It's not 
protests in the streets and stuff like that. I mean, good luck to people who do that. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, it's deeper. So I am, because of that gathering understanding, Henrik, I am positive. But f- over the next, uh, I don't know, uh, six, seven years, this is going to be a very, very challenging time because yes. um, this uh, conspiracy is moving on fast and the, the, the events that are going to eventually bring it down are not going to happen soon, but I'm sure they will happen within seven years or so. Okay, well, that sounds really uh, interesting, and that is, of course, something we can uh, return to uh, at some later point when we have you back on the program, because we we are going to focus primarily here on the Lisbon Treaty, and that's more, uh, in one way, what's really happening uh, right now here uh, on the planet. And and as you said, David, this process has gone uh, also very fast, you know, but it's 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 done at a, in a stealthy way, yet people are more becoming more and more aware of it. Uh, I don't know if you want to lay some groundwork in regards to, uh, you know, or, or before rather we discuss the possibility that a treaty might be ratified uh, in October uh, then, uh, David. Well, it's a simple equation, uh, Henrik. If, if there's a few of you, and in terms of full knowledge and awareness of what they're doing um, and the goal that they are heading towards, we're talking about a tiny fraction of the global population. So we really are talking in full awareness, uh, the tiny uh, few seeking to control everyone else, the billions. Now, you can only do that if you centralize decision making. The more diversity of decision making there is, the less control any few can have over that. There's just too many points to control and you couldn't do it. So there has been this um, incessant centralization of power in every area of our lives that has gone on now, if you, if you look back, for centuries. We were in a situation once where we had tribes, small tribes, bigger tribes, but a tribal situation. And the people um, in the tribe were making decisions about the lives, and welfare, um, actions of that tribe. We then went to the next stage where large numbers of these tribes were pulled together in different parts of the world into what we call nations. Now we had a few people dictating from the center of that nation, the government, to all the other tribes who at one point before that were deciding their own destiny. We now, particularly in Europe, but this is planned for around the world too. I mean, it's happening in in, in Africa with what they call the African Union. Mm. They want a a North American Union becoming an American Union. They want an Asia-Pacific Union and so on. Um, What we're seeing in Europe is the next stage, very well advanced now, and that was the pulling together of the nations under a central uh, point of control. So now... We have a handful of bureaucrats, not even elected people, they're irrelevant. They just take their massive expenses and their massive wages and, then, and, and, and play politics that yeah. have no imp- whatsoever. I mean, it's just a joke. Keep them happy, give them lots of money, then they won't complain. Okay, go away. Yes, you can have your expense. No, no way, I don't need a receipt. You just, just go. We're bureaucrats here. We're making the decisions. Leave us alone. <laughs> and so these bureaucrats are now dictating to all the former nations of Europe that once decided their own destiny, or at least up to a large extent more than they do now, and to all the former tribes beyond that 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 did it on an even smaller um, level. So we've now reached the point where according to, uh, you know, media reports and all the rest of it in in Britain, something like 75% of laws that are imposed upon the British people that pass through the Westminster Parliament in theory actually start out life with the bureaucrats in Brussels. And now this Lisbon Treaty, this European constitution under another name, because that's all it is, um, is uh, designed to advance that centralization of power even more, uh, not least with bringing in a figurehead um, called a president, which horrifically currently... They are promoting uh, Tony Blair for that, Mm. a war criminal, and a major, major, anything you say, sir, frontman for this network of families. I mean, he did an extraordinarily effective job for them as prime minister of uh, Britain 
for 10 years, joining in with Bush and stuff with the, the overseas wars and the war on terror and all that stuff. 